Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, July 1st, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 27 through 31, and chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Brethren, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give all away, if I have, if I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1, and then verses 5 through 8. At that time, Jesus called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every infirmity. These twelve Jesus sent out, charging them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. This morning's readings are in commemoration of the holy unmercenary healers Cosmos and Damien. An unmercenary healer is somebody who heals without receiving any kind of compensation. It is intentionally meant to be a contrast to the mercenaries who are soldiers who kill and they get paid. So they're the exact opposite of what a mercenary would be. Mercenary would be a soldier who goes and makes wounded people, and an unmercenary healer is someone who takes someone who is wounded and brings them to healing. And so when you hear the readings this morning, you can hear what is going on inside the um, readings because of the messages that are found within each. The first we'll look at is the gospel because it is a, a remembrance. We've actually just had this reading, but it's a remembrance of Jesus calling his 12 disciples and sending them out into the lands where there are um, the lost sheep of Israel. So they do not include the Gentiles, they do not include the Samaritans, but they do go and minister to the people of the Hebrew culture. And so he says to preach to them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then they are to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, and cast out demons. Think about what each of those does. As we know, theologically, our bodies are subject to corruption. We get old, our muscles just aren't what they used to be. Sometimes we get sick, sometimes, but all of those, sometimes, you know, our bones break, things like that. But all of those are pointers to things that we should never have in our existence. If we were like Adam and Eve before the fall, we wouldn't have any of those things. Our bodies wouldn't be subject to corruption. Our bones wouldn't break, those kinds of things. So when they go out and they minister to the lost sheep of Israel, they are taking away the things that distinguish those people from the way that they are supposed to be had they been in the same spirit as Adam and Eve before the fall. So what's removed from them? Illness, because illness is a sign of corruption. Death, the same thing. Cleansing lepers, because that disease at that point was incurable. Thank God it's a little bit more curable now. And casting out demons. No one would have a demon if they were 
pure in, in looking in the image and actually having the likeness of God. So Cosmos and Damien are inheritors of this particular tradition. What they did is they went and they healed people together. As a, as, as a pair, they went out and they did these things. If you take a look in our church, actually, we have um, an icon of Cosmos and Damien, the unmercenary healers. They give the gifts of the Holy Eucharist and they also minister to the ill. Um, and we actually have a little container with uh, oil in it with some Q-tips. And we can anoint ourselves there, that little shrine that we have built for Saints Cosmos and Damien. Now, what I want to say last has to do with the gifts that St. Paul speaks of in this letter to the Corinthians. I'm not going to talk so much about the gifts themselves because I've talked about them before. Just to say that each is important, but each is different. And so we celebrate the diversity of those gifts because together we are better with that diversity than if we were all just ears or mouths or teeth or something like that. Obviously, it wouldn't make sense. Our bodies need to have a diversity of organs, and so the body of Christ also needs to have a diversity of talents within it. However, the important thing to remember is it doesn't matter what kind of talent you have. You could be a brilliant mathematician. You could be a great leader of people. You can be um, a person who speaks in some kind of tongue, be there the tongue of angels that no one can understand without an interpreter, or the tongue of a foreign language. Latin or uh, Arabic or any of those languages. Sure, I mean, we can have those things. But if you have those things but have not love, it is a complete waste of time. And you um, really doesn't, what you have really doesn't mean a thing. Or as St. Paul says, you gain nothing. And then he gives a description of what love is. Love is patient and kind, not jealous or boastful, not arrogant or rude. So let's think about those things. Love is patient because sometimes things don't happen right away, but yet we bear the time that goes between wh where we are now and when those things come to pass. We don't get overly upset. We don't get overly anxious. We don't get overly annoyed. We just bear with patience. And with kindness, kindness is a great gift to have. And love, when you have love in its pure form, you have kindness also. We have so many counter examples today of people who I'm not sure they love, but it doesn't matter. They're not kind. They should be kind. Our world would be a much better place if people had kindness as a base virtue. Love is not jealous because love doesn't need to question. Love just needs to trust. And so jealousy is not a spiritual virtue by any means. And it is not boastful because there is no point in boasting. Think of it this way. If you, as a Christian, are striving in your own Christian life and you see somebody else who's striving in theirs, but they get all the accolades, they get recognized for how holy they are, they get recognized for how patient and loving they are, do you get jealous or do you celebrate the fact that people are recognizing the beauty that is in that person? It is much a better thing to celebrate. If you go to heaven and you're the least person in heaven and there's someone else that you grew up with who is far better and far more advanced in heaven, do you get jealous? No, because each of you has an equal portion. Because what is infinity plus 10? It's still infinity. What is infinity plus infinity? It's still infinity. It never changes. And so even there, even being the least person in the kingdom of heaven is far greater than being the best person in the world. And so there's, the point is that there is no room for jealousy or boasting in love. It is not arrogant, nor is it rude. Arrogance is the, ap is the complete opposite. It combined, I guess, with boastfulness is the opposite of humility. It's, it's a, a fruit of, and a bitter fruit at that, of pride. And so it's important for us to eliminate those kinds of things. An arrogance, a conceit for self, completely antithetical to who we are as Christians. Christ as God emptied himself, took on the form of a servant, and was willing to be subject to gravity and all the laws of physics, but it was also willing to be 
the lowest of the kinds of humans that we know. A poor carpenter's son. That's who he was. He wasn't a captain of industry. He wasn't a power broker. He wasn't a king or a wolf of Wall Street. He was just a lowly son of a carpenter. And so there's no way by embodying the virtues of Christ that we can possibly be arrogant or boastful because he wasn't arrogant or boastful. And nor is it rude. Rudeness is another thing. Civility within our culture today is a pr at a premium. So we should do what we can to embody that kind of a gift also. So again, to recap, patient, kind, not jealous, not boastful, not arrogant, not rude. It does not insist on its own way. Instead, with humility, it follows the way of others. And it, re and it is neither irritable nor resentful. Resentment comes when you don't get your own way. And irritableness comes when things happen and get in your way and they keep you from doing the things that you want to do. All of those things need to be cast aside. And with a spirit of love, with gentleness, kindness, and humility, compassion, and the desire for reconciliation, good things come. It does not rejoice at someone's wrong, but it does rejoice in the right. Think about that. When someone you, even someone you don't like, does what's wrong, you shouldn't pair, you shouldn't deal with it. You shouldn't rejoice in it. You should just pray that that person, and and again, in a spirit of gentleness and humility, that that person turns towards the right. And that doesn't mean that you're in the right. It just means that they have work to do, just as we all have work to do. You know, remember the speck in the log thing. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Because all love comes from God, who is an inexhaustible source of love in the entire universe. Love never ends. Now, in the example of Cosmos and Damien, their tireless service to God and healing the people around them brought them ultimately to a martyr's death. But even there, they celebrate with, with Christ in heaven that they triumphed over the pitfalls of the world, that they were able to show the way to the kingdom of heaven through their love and through their mercy. So through their example and through the example of others like them, may God inspire us to go and do likewise in this world, this thirsty world that so badly needs our guidance and our care and our love so that it may turn from the dark to the light. May God bless you and keep you and your family always and forever. Have a great day.